Hmm, get a tragic here. Welcome back to Mage Knight. Let's get right into this, shall we? And Yablamo. Draw up to six. Okay, so we've got Decompose again. We've got our Stolen Ambush card. Now, what's going on over here? We have a horrible monster that costs three to get into position. That's not too hard, so let's move in there. Oh, we were on a thingo at the end of the last turn, so we should have an extra blue crystal. Okay, so, boom. Uh, what's going on with my keyboard? Zooming it out for no reason. Okay, so that's the wrong color. I do know how to play this game. Oop, that was blue. Uh, that was blue, right? Yeah. Okay, boom. Okay, so that's four to move in. We now have plus four block and plus two attack. Now, this guy is seven to kill but we need to block seven. We can actually block seven with this, right? Because we've got a blue crystal on it. So that is block seven by just tapping him. So boom, that's block seven. That's the end of him, he's done. Now we need to do nine damage, which I can go five. I don't have a red crystal though. Uh, what does this do? Armor reduced by three. That creates... Okay, so what I need to do is... Why don't I swap this? Now, technically, this says you can't do it during combat, but nothing has been revealed yet. Like, so as far as I'm concerned, I'm still planning whether I want to move in here and attack because this is a roaming guy. He's already revealed. So I'm quite happy to do it now. I'm going to use Tome of Relearning. Let's chuck that away. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't want to do this at all, do I? Oh, yes, I do. So I'm going to use Tome of Relearning, and I'm going to take this spell. Oh, that was just to create a green mana. Yoink. And I'm going to get rid of a Generate, which uh, we don't really use anyway. So, bam. Now I can create a green and a blue. So we've already blocked it. We just need to create the attack now. So I'm going to tap. So I'm just going to use a blue and a green from here and save that for later because I basically can replace these. Except what I might do is actually use it because we, we've got a the perfect opportunity to use it and there might be a situation where we can only use a blue or a green and that'll be a waste. So we'll tap that. We get a blue and a green mana token to use this turn. I then use Tremor and I go green and that reduces the armor by three. So this is now a six to kill. And then I go blue and that is four attack using shapeshift. And then I'll just go five, six, and that seems dead. And that way we don't have to use the, unfortunately we didn't have a red mana. Whatever, that seemed dead. Oh wait, no, we've got this thing, don't we? Attack plus two, four, five, six. So we don't even need to use these, of course. So to recap, we use Tome of Learning to get this crystal thing. We then tapped it. We used a green crystal on here to go minus three armor. And we use this guy to tap to get block seven. So block seven is done. Minus three armor means it's six to kill. And then we just use this, which is plus two attack. So that's four, five, six. And we're using shape shift to turn that into attack power. And your bambo, that is dead. Dead monster. Doink. Noise. Okay, so that's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It gets to 38. He goes up another one. And 
he's also a elementalist faction monster. Yoink. Amulet of Reawakening. Pick a card at random from your discard pile and put it in the bottom of your D deck. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Bamo. Ooh. What are we going to get? Who knows? What's this thing here? Oh, this is a Cloak of Shielding. That's We haven't had, needed that. And that's the end of his turn. Let's go over here. Now you are drawing to nine and we do have mana search if we need it. Okay, what have you got here? Movement, movement. You've got a terrible hand. Look at this, All it's pretty much all movement. And a threaten, which we don't use. Now we do need four to get in there. So let's go four to get in. There is a green. And once I'm in, I need to destroy this guy. What is he? He's five, six, six attack we need. Should be able to do that, right? Here we are, six attack. That requires a green crystal. And I'm just going to let him hit me. So he's hitting for five. We've got three armor, so that is two wounds. And I'm going to heal those two wounds with tranquility for the other green crystal. Your bamo. Lots of green mana being used today. And that is him dead. So he, we've attacked back for six because this actually gives us plus three instead of plus two. We didn't block it and then we healed both of these wounds. And that is another dead creature. Uh, over here, sorry. So that's plus five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, look at this. Bam. <laughs> I very rarely see a guy get that low. That's pretty horrible. <laughs> so he has flipped over here. He's now got four armor, which is pretty awesome. And he's used so much of his gas. Uh, right. Your blamo. Your turn. What have you got? Okay, so we do have Mysterious Box activated. I still haven't bothered to find out exactly how the timing works on this. The way I'm playing it is that when you use Mysterious Box, that's the instant I have to use the ever artifact. So if I do Mysterious Box and reveal an attack card, if I'm not in the attack phase, it doesn't work. Because it just seems so too powerful to scry the deck and then use it any time during your turn. So I think the, the little instant symbol in the top left is basically you can play Mysterious Box at any time, but the artifact itself is, because it turns into the artifact, whatever the timing is for that artifact becomes the point where it's supposed to be used. That's how I'm doing it. So after all that, let's have a quick look at what's going on. Okay, he has nothing to do. He wants to go one, two, three, four, and get into there, I guess. God, he has got nothing left for him to conquer. He could burn down a monastery. There is a uh, thing over here that he could do. And that's pretty much it. The, the map is really picked clean. There's a, one more space over here that hasn't been used. So yeah, I think he's going to go bam and then bam and see what happens from there. So we need to produce four movement. Okay, and we have pathfinding. And we need to produce eight movement, beg your pardon. But we do have pathfinding. So pathfinding is ridiculous. The move cost of all terrains are reduced to two this turn. So, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. So, boom, pathfinding. 
So all trains are reduced to two. That means we go one, two, three, four. And now, do we want to attack this actual turn? I think we'll wait one turn and attack next turn. There's no point in doing it right now. And your turn, draw up to six. You are on a, no you're not, we need two to move and then we're on another dungeon. So we don't really have any movement. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this and put a white crystal and take a white crystal and just prep so we have access to Wings of Night. And I think I'm also going to go move two and just move in here. Noise, back to Dwarfy Man. Yoink. Okay, so we've got lots of crystals. We've got an untap effect. I may as well just use that right now and untap my imp. Uh, this is a heal, so you have to do it outside of combat. Okay, so what are we doing up here? We need to move. Okay, so to move into a city is always two points. Okay, well, it's actually a uh, green area anyway, but it's always two points to move into a city. So that is two, five. So we need seven movement to get onto that spot. Seven movement. Can we produce it? Uh, what have we got up here? There is a red. Not sure I want to use this right now because that's five block. <laughs> but we can do this. That's five, six, seven. Bam. Okay, so that's five movements using improvisation, and then we tapped our scout for another two move. And that's seven movement. So we're now in that location. And how many cards have we got left? Eight cards. Let's have a quick look at what we've got. We've already used Mind Read. Tremor we've already used, improvisation we've used, so we've got a lot of action. We have thrown, we've only, I don't know what other combat cards we have. I'm just thinking, should I decompose? If I decompose, I'll draw a lot more cards next turn. Because no, we do have two attacks. Yeah, I'm going to decompose. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not going to decompose. Let's move along home, shall we? Ya blemo. Now you are drawing to, are you still drawing to nine? Yes, we are still drawing to nine. Bonk. Okay, so we've got all our influence cards, but it doesn't matter because uh, we're at negative five or whatever. And we have another monster here who is, should be able to kill this guy. We haven't got a lot of attack uh, stuff. Look at this, it's all movement again. Movement, movement, movement. We've got four attack there. And that's pretty much it. If I can kill this guy, it'll be really, really handy. So this guy is six fire with brutal. So I can tap you and use a blue. There is a blue in here. So that's created four block. So I need to create another four block. So I'm going to tap U for three and then sideways, that's another four. So because this has got elemental, it's right. We're blocking for four using four ice block. So there's only two points of, of block we need to produce. But because this has got fire, we have to produce double block. So we've got to produce four block total. So there's three block on the foresters and then two cards equals one block to make, uh, oh no, wait, there's three block here 
and one card sideways equals four block, which is enough to do the last two points. So now he's blocked. Now we need to produce the eight attack power, which is actually probably going to be the harder thing to do here. We've got four. Five, six. Do I want to use this card? Uh, yes, I do. Four, five, six. Four, five, six. Seven, eight. And a white crystal. Bam. And a red crystal. Bam. Actually, let's uh, tap you. We'll take a red mana token and a blue crystal. So, we've done all the blocking. Now we need to produce eight physical attack. So, boom, that's four attack paid with a red crystal. We also did this thing here, which is we're only looking at the two ranged attack here. It also removes the resistance, but who cares? So, that's four, five, six. And then we tapped him for another two, which is eight, which is this guy dead. You blammo. And that's another eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yelp. And this is another. Oh, we're negative five. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much that. Uh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to actually take a spell for when I defeated this thing. Now, this this card here was the last card drawn. So if I put that there and then put a spell in my hand, I should be fine. I think I'll take meditation. Boom. And that fixes that little problem. Sweet. So basically when I did the draw at the beginning of this turn, the very last card I drew was this thing. So instead of that, I just put the, the spell in my hand and that's fixed that error. And the reason I'm getting meditation is because it allows us to pick some cards out of our discard pile. That'd be very, very handy. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Now your turn, drawing back up to seven. Okay, so we want to attack this location, right? And we're going to do it. We need a keep and we need a dungeon. So now that I've uh, initiated a combat, I'm now going to do Mysterious Box and see what we get. Assign this to a unit you control once around. When the unit is about to get wounded, flip this card to ignore the wound. Ah, uh, this is useless. We don't have any units, do we? Oh, we do actually, yeah. So I can choose to use this if I need it. I'll just leave it up there for now. So I could put it here. Oh, this is outside of combat. So I can't use this. Damn it, I've already started the combat. So that is no good. Whoop. So if you're wondering what I meant there is, see the little hand icon? That is like a heal timing, which is outside of combat. And I chose to try it inside of combat. So this is no use, we put it back in our hand. What you got for us? Okay. This thing has magical immunity, so we can't use this awesome ability on it. And this thing does not get rid of fortification, so we can't get rid of that fortified. So basically that is not able to be used this turn, unfortunately. I do have a Tranquility, which can heal two, which means I can heal this guy after he's blocked. So that could be handy. Neither of these guys have... Uh, you know what I can do? Actually, you know what I can do? I can go... Bang. Oh, wait, I don't have a blue crystal. I've got Blood of Ancients. What have we got up here? 
Blue or a green card. Yes, okay. So, Blood of Ancients. Gain a wound, pay one mana of any color. Gain a card of that color for the advanced action offer and put it into your hand. Okay, so we're going to do Blood of Ancients. We gain a wound. I pay with a green mana. Or maybe, yeah, with a green mana. That's right. And we gain a mana of any color and place it in our hand. I'm going to take Power of Crystals. When I play this, doesn't cost anything. Gain a crystal to your inventory of a basic color you do not already own. I'm going to go dang. And I'm going to take Blue Crystal. I'm then going to take a Black Die and pay with Blue and do Ice a siege ice attack eight now because it's siege attack i can kill fortified units so four points and he's dead and i've still got another four points of that siege left which hits this guy so i've only got four more ranged or whatever left to produce that's interesting is it siege attack is that a separate you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Siege Attack might actually be a completely separate set of, like when I'm producing uh, Siege Attack, block fight, here we are, ranged in Siege Phase, during this phase before one or more attacks of, okay, so basically what it says is, I can play ranged and Siege Attack cards in the same phase, but only Siege Attack cards will hit fortified enemies but i'm pretty sure that i can mix them as i wish which is what i'm trying to do here so that's good so i kill him with four points i've still got four points of siege left which hits him but i can actually do the other eight the other four points using normal ranged because he's elusive i've got to do eight okay so i've already killed four i need four more points which i think i can do i've got two ranged here one two i've got one ranged here that's three and I've got one range here, that's four. And that is everybody dead, Dave. Nice. Yeah, blammo. So that is, what was it? Four and five and a negative point. So one down for killing a hero. And that's nine rep. That's what, uh, 45 here, boing. And we also get an artifact from that, uh, from that thing as well. Well, I guess we'll take Soul Harvest since we don't have really have units. Yeah. Um, yep, that's right. Boom, and you boom, and you boom. Trying to go a little bit faster with my videos. I hope I'm not going too fast or making mistakes. And I guess I'll uh, tranquility and heal that wound at the end of my turn. Oh, you know what though? I did forget something. Uh, range attack. I did seed, so I have to take a wound for that. So I still have that wound in my hand. Right. And, oop. and right. And finally, you blammo. Okay, so this is a pretty terrible hand. We've got no attack cards of any sort. So there's that. Oh well, I may as well tap you at least and roll my dice. I get a white and a green. And throw away all runes received this turn. Wings of Wind stops him from attacking. So I think I'm just going to discard this card just so there's an extra card to draw next turn. And why is there a big gap here? Oh, right. I didn't chuck this coin away. And that be it. That be it, man. 
So there's not a lot of things. There's basically one, two, three, four sites left on the entire map to take. Now, when I play multiplayer solo, I tend to play it as a race, whoever can race. When you're playing in real life, you spend a lot of time actually attacking other people's castles and stuff, which I haven't really done in this game. But that's just how I play it in a solo kind of mode. But uh, yeah, that'd be that. And I will see you guys next time.